Hello fellow HubSpotters, this is Emma with Kiwi Creative. Today we're talking about the new lead scoring feature available in the pro and enterprise tiers of Marketing Hub. Some of our most popular HubSpot helper videos of all time are about lead scoring, so I'm really excited to share the updated version of this feature with you. As always, to help map out our strategy and document the process, I'll be utilizing a worksheet. Some of you may already have the original, but download your copy of the updated lead scoring worksheet below. All right, before we get down and dirty, please note, as of the recording of this video, only contact and company scores can be created in the score builder. You can still create scores for other objects like deals and tickets. You'll just have to create them the old fashioned way of which we do have a video on how to do that. Also, some of the features I'm going to cover are limited to the marketing enterprise tier. So real quick, let's talk about why this, why this feature is really cool. So number one, it can decay scores. This is a really great improvement for those behavior attributes that we're missing with the traditional HubSpot score property. We can limit the number of times a contact receives points for the same action. We can also limit scoring to specific contacts or companies based on list membership. We can also include color-coded tags, just like deal and ticket tags. There's also built-in score performance per metrics at the enterprise level. Now, some super duper updates include, we can now see when a score was created and updated and by which of your users versus scrolling through a long, long list. We can also search through and filter those scores. We can automatically reset a score to zero. I know that's been a Kiwi thing that we've wanted for a long time. And we can also add those scorecards to the contact and company records to display not just the change over time, but what behavior actually bumped the points. So that's how it was cool. Here's how the feature may be a little bit complicated. If you're on the pro tier, this new lead scoring feature separately measures two distinct groups, engagement and fit. Now, if you have enterprise, there's a combined score currently in beta that will mush those together. The traditional lead scoring fields allows you to mix and match those attributes, but as you'll see in the demo, us pro users have to create two different scores and they're displayed separately. That being said, you can mush them together using a custom calculation field, but it can start to get complicated and maybe overwhelming for a newer user. Before we get started with the demo, as I mentioned, we have a new worksheet to help you not just compare and contrast the two scoring options available for you and help you select the right fit, but it'll also help you strategize and document your scoring plan before you start pushing buttons. So this is hyperlinked below. So now let's get into the actual demo. As usual, I'm in my HubSpot. A demo portal, so it's a little wonky, but the experience remains the same. In the left-hand toolbar underneath marketing, you'll notice we have a lead scoring beta. That's where we're starting our journey here. If you are enterprise, you can start with AI. Uh, for the rest of us folks, we're going to start from scratch. Again, you'll notice we can score contacts and companies separately. We can also score contact uh, engagement and contact fit. Of course, if you select companies, it's company engagement, company fit. I'll start with contact engagement. It walks you through a little bit of uh, instructions. Let's click create. So first things first, I always like to name it um, because depending on how many cooks are in your kitchen, uh, this can start getting a little confusing. Let's add some criteria. We'll add an event group. Now, first things first, you'll notice we can set our score limit from zero to 100 points. As you can see, we can update that here. I can name my scoring group. So since we're in engagement, we can call this email engagement because perhaps I want to um, notice the engagement specifically with my email. I can also, as you recall, decay those scores. So you can specify what percentage you'd like to reduce at what interval. So perhaps um, in this instance, we'll keep it every 50, reduced by 50% every three months because we are emailing often, for example. So now I can add my event criteria. So since I'm sticking with email, I'm going to select my marketing email. 
and you can see what is new about this feature is instead of giving you a long list of all these different attributes you can select, it's breaking it out into more bite-sized pieces per that engagement. So this can be helpful. So in this instance, I'll select uh, opened email. I can filter. Um, the open the email open occurred um, less than 30 days ago, for example. And of course, I can add those points. So I'm going to pause, build out some more and come back. OK, so I updated some engagement score examples. We have opened emails, clicked emails. And again, I, I like to label my section so I don't get turned around. We can measure sales emails in this particular engagement score uh, contains any of certain um, names in your email subject line. We can add points. As you can see, form submissions. Again, we can reduce this if we desire. Here's something that's cool. We can lump all of those desired forms together and score them separately. So that's a new feature that's kind of nice for organizational purposes. And we have meetings. So we have that as our example. We're going to go up to contacts right there in the middle and double check. Are we scoring all of our contacts? or do we want to score a specific list? In this example, we're going to say, we're going to pick everybody. And under settings, this is where we can rename it again if we desire. You notice this top label is identical. You can name it either place. And then under score thresholds in the left-hand column here, this is where we can specify um, what does this mean to us? If they have very few points, are they uh, a low threshold, and, and maybe we're just kind of keeping our eyes on them in the sidebar. If they're medium, does something happen? Do we trigger a workflow when someone's a medium threshold? I certainly hope we trigger a workflow for somebody to pick up the phone when we hit high, right? So we can update these uh, point values. As you'll notice, the value below changed immediately, so I don't have to update both of these uh, sides here. I can just do that, right? And now, if I'm all done here, I can go ahead and hit review and turn on. So I'll turn this on and you're saying, well, what's the big deal? I have this turned on. Hooray. Now what? So here's something pretty cool. So first we have this nice little dashboard. Again, we're visiting our marketing um, item in the left hand column. We're going to lead scoring. So this is how we can then find our score should we need to make any updates. We, of course, can create a fit score if we desire. We can create a company engagement score if we know that we have a lot of contacts at a single company and we'd rather, we'd rather funnel that score up. So if I click on my existing score, what's nice is I kind of have a little dashboard here. So it's letting me know how many contacts have been scored? What's my average score? In the past, we had to create an average score per life cycle stage. I still like that report, but we have something a little similar here. I can see my score distribution. I'm not surprised. This is a demo portal. No one's interacting with anything, right? But this is nice because it allows us to kind of say, are we measuring things correctly? Do we need to adjust our points? Maybe we were a little too aggressive or a little too conservative. Now, here's what's another cool feature. Let's go up to our settings cog in the top right hand corner. And in our left hand menu, let's head down underneath data management. We'll open up our objects and we'll go to contacts. You would do the same for companies if you create a company score, but let's go grab this. And what I'm going to do with it is visit the record customization tab, middle top there. I want to edit my view. We only have a default view. This could be different for you if you have different views for different teams. And what I want to do in this right hand column is add a card. Which one you ask? Lead score. Oh, what do you know? We don't even have to make that. We can just add it. I'm going to stick it right up at the top. Let's save this guy and go see what it looks like on a record. So I picked the lovely fake Susan and I can see a big old fat score right in the right top right hand corner. Of course, you can place this anywhere you'd like in the right hand column. Now, Susan hasn't engaged with anything, so it's a big fat zero. But if she had, this color would match to the threshold we set. So red, yellow, green, right? So it gives all of your users a very like quick visual cue of what's going on. I can also click see score history. And this is where we would see, oh, did she book that meeting? That's why the points jumped. Oh, did she click that email or reply to the sales email? This is when and this is what made it jump. So this is a really fantastic feature we had been missing thus far.
We can create this for contacts or companies. We can also create that fit score. So don't forget, we also want to consider those firmographic details, right? Um, so we could, of course, create a different fit based on industry, job title, annual revenue, um, location, all of those. So that has never gone out the window. Our demo today just focused on that engagement. So this is how we could either, uh, again, utilize the traditional HubSpot score property or this new feature. And as we can see, this is in beta. So I fully expect this to get cooler as time goes on. But this is how we could utilize that and have that front and center for all of our users to see. As you can see, with HubSpot's new lead scoring tool, you get all the firmographic and behavioral scoring features that we already love. We get updates to the features that weren't quite our favorites. And we have an easy way to monitor performance. But always remember, any updates to your portal are first worth strategizing and documenting. So download the updated lead scoring worksheet linked below. If you enjoyed this video, check out our other HubSpot helper videos and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Need custom recommendations for your HubSpot portal? Check out our HubSpot action plan today.